welcome to Productions MJC. This is Mark, and today we're going to be discussing third grade proof that the Earth is a globe. And yeah, I kid you not, nine, a nine-year-old could figure this out, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, uh, we have the two contenders here, uh, the two con contending theories, uh, uh, globe on the left, flat Earth on the right, and I've you've seen my other videos, but today we are going to conduct a third grade experiment. Uh, later on, I'll show you what that is. I'll include the video for that. Uh, but really, it just all you have to have is a large ball of straw, flashlight, and tape. And I'll I'll insert that video in here and show you what we're talking about. Now, as I've shown before, this is the flat Earth representation. Notice that both stay exactly the same size. They stay uh, roughly the same shape exactly. And the flat earthers say that the ball sun moves across the top, uh, but our perception of it is it arcs up and down as it moves. Uh, similar fa fashion to a plane. So let's get into that. <clears throat> There's an argument in favor of the globe. What is it? Sunshine. It's that simple. The way very tall buildings interact with everyday sunlight is something everybody can witness for themselves and understand. Uh, and then we'll talk about time zones as well. I'll mix that in, but we'll, we'll get into that. Now, there on the left-hand side, uh, over 2,000 uh, feet, I believe it is, uh, 2,700 feet or something like that. We have the building we're going to be talking about. Uh, and the Khalifa is over 828 meters, more than 160 stories, and it holds just a ton of records. I, I listed a few here. Uh, tallest building in the world, tallest freestanding structure in the world, highest number of stories. Uh, <clears throat> pardon my cold. Uh, that are the highest number of uh, occupied floors, uh, highest outdoor observation deck. Now, the interesting thing is here's another record it holds. Three minutes. It is so tall. After the sun has set on the first floor, it takes nearly three minutes for the sun to set on the 163rd floor. And... You know, they say if you ride the express elevator up, you can see two suns, uh, two sunsets. Or if you're standing on the top and you ride the elevator down real fast, you can see two sunrises. Uh, like I said, it will reverse that and it's sunrise. Sunlight touches the top nearly three minutes before people on the ground are able to see it. That thing is tall. So, basically we're, what we're going to be talking about is you'll see two of these from this building if you can get up there fast enough but people up there will see this three minutes you know two and three quarter minutes after you do and the nice thing about this is right along the water it is not in a valley it's not you know because some people say hey the reason that the sunlight doesn't touch a valley floor when there's a mountain there is because there's a mountain there well there's no mountain there's no nothing there's the water right there so here's my little experiment let me show you what I'm talking about <clears throat> now on this as the earth turns and that tall building comes around it comes out of the shadow you can see the top of the building be illuminated going down till it finally touches the base okay and if the earth were rotating in a different direction if if I was on the opposite side see how the bottom of the building this is sunset the bottom of the building goes and then finally the top is in darkness simple experiment a third grader could do and understand we're living on a ball that's the only place that can happen so only on a globe does does that happen only on a globe is that is is that the only way you can do that let's let's see let's look at that so skeptic dog is going to question the veracity of that claim that that only happens on a globe now here's the flat earth 
day and night cycle, the sunrise and sunset. So here we have, uh, first originally this was one of the things that was postulated, but that perfectly flat line cannot be created by a round sun without some sort of a, a mask or, you know. Then they theorized this. They said, oh, well, wait a minute. Yeah, it's not a perfectly straight line, but it's pretty darn good. And then when the question came up, well, wait a minute, there's an intense part about in the center, and then if you look, the light kind of trails off to the sides. So what's up with that? Well, then they said, okay, yeah, it's, it's really actually just this really sharp defined cone. There's no trailing off. It's really sharp. That's why it, when it travels away from you, poof, it, it just all of a sudden disappears over the horizon, as they say. Uh, well, as we say as globe earthers. So they say it's actually this well-defined sharp cone. You say, oh, okay, cone. Let's, let's take a look. This is their time zones. Remember I mentioned that uh, I'll briefly touch on time zones here. But they say this is how time zones work on that hard, sharp cone that, I, that they were talking about. I'll delve into this in just a little bit. So here's the argument against flat Earth. A cone-shaped light must be the source on a flat Earth? Why a cone? Why are they saying it has to be a cone? A, and a ball sun? It just doesn't perform as required. In fact, it's an utter disaster. And I'll, but I'll show you why a cone's a disaster too uh, later on. But this is what they say. Let's get to that. And a typical flat Earth response would be uh, the sun shoots rays in a cone. Uh, here's a nice little light I've got here, it's cone. Uh, I can even shrink it down to a cone. <clears throat> now they say the earth, it passes over the earth in a cone shape. So it works. It, it climbs up that, you know, it works. Uh, let me get it out a little, little ways more and uh, show you. They say, see, it starts at the bottom of the building and then goes up to the top. Then it gets over it at noon, and then as it passes on to the other side, there it goes down. So they say it works because the light is shining in a cone. Okay, cone seemed to work, didn't it? Uh, not really. Because as the cone-shaped spotlight moves away from you, you no longer see a round circle. You see an oval until the oval actually disappears because it's shining on somebody else far away from you. When you see a sunset, does it smash into a cat eye shape, an oval shape, and the oval gets smaller and smaller until it disappears? No, it's perfectly round until it touches the ocean. Uh, and there's distortion of light rays and such, but right before it touches the ocean, it's perfectly round. It does not act like this. It does not cast light like this. The cone is impossible under their model. I haven't seen a model of the flat earth that works yet. Now, as we look at this, they'll say, oh, there's a hot spot down there on the earth. You can't get that with a globe sun. And I say, what are you talking about? And they go, well, people say this is a cone and it's shining a hot spot because the sun is real close. Do you just remember the former slide? If that were a spotlight and a cone, it wouldn't be round if it was shining. And supposedly it's 3,000 miles above the Earth. Does that look 3,000 miles? This balloon that's taking this picture is at 119. No, that, that it's far away. It doesn't work. It's not a spotlight because you can see a perfectly round shape. They say this proves their theory. This blows the flat earth theory right out of the water because that is not a spotlight. How does a spotlight behave? Well, if a spotlight is aimed straight at you, 
And I've seen plenty of this because my grandfather was a section foreman for the railroad. And I spent a lot of time around the railroad tracks. And as the train comes and as it gets closer and closer, the entire telephone pole lights up at exactly the same time. It does not go from top to bottom or bottom to top. The entire telephone pole, which is perpendicular to that light. So they say, well, yeah, it's a, that's, a, that's a spotlight. That's a cone shining at you. That's right. It's not a spotlight or cone shining down from above because that's what you say the sun is. It's just, it doesn't work. Now, here's another thing that let's touch on time zones again. They tell you a time zone works, but it doesn't with a spotlight. Because if you'll notice, Brisbane in the morning is the same time zone as Peking, China. I mean, I, uh, Beijing, Beijing, China. So as you look at this, Beijing and Brisbane are in the same time zone. But at night, on a spotlight flat earth model, we're talking what? Uh, Tokyo or no, not even Tokyo. It just doesn't it doesn't work. Let me show you how that looks when you draw. See their their version of the time zones only included sunrise. Once you put sunset in there, which is the back end of that, you can see indicated Perth, for instance, in the black arrow. Perth is the same time zone as Tokyo. So that would make in the former one Brisbane is on a time zone with Juneau, Alaska at night, but in the morning, it's on Peking, China, Be Beijing, Beijing, China, one of those two. I mean, see, the time zones don't match up once you get the front edge and the trailing edge of the alleged spotlight of the flat Earth. Time zones don't work at all. I have not seen a flat Earth model that works. Now, let me let me show you in this one too as that moves around in case you see Brisbane and Perth they're on totally opposite time zones and I apologize for the quality but you can see what I'm talking about it just doesn't work sunrise and sunset in Brisbane as a matter of fact sunrise in Perth and sunset in Brisbane, both line up with Juneau, Alaska. So how can two opposite sides of the continent of Australia be in the same time zone? They're, they're in the same time zone as Juneau, Alaska, but one, one is uh, the same time zone for sunrise, the other one is the same time zone for sunset? That's how it has to work on a flat Earth. Time zones don't work on a flat Earth model. They can't, they can't make it work. And in a former video, I, I show you how the, the former flat earth model doesn't work. But this more correct flat earth map, it's even worse. Because the black line from the North Pole extending halfway down into South America is exactly the same width from Brisbane to Perth on this flat earth map. Everything's just disproportional. It's all wrong. And the space between Melbourne and uh, Timmer Sea is approximately the width of the United States, uh, a little bit more. So that eh, it comes close, but it still doesn't work. Because in reality, there is only about a, an 8 to 11% difference in total land mass between Australia and the continental United States. But as you saw on the former one, on the flat earth model, the width between Perth and Brisbane covers three quarters of the earth from the North Pole all the way down to halfway down South America. But in real life, you fly that, you fly a plane and it's almost a perfect matchup with the United States of America. Now, this is an answer to, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of other video makers there I've they have yet to produce a working model of their geocentric earth time zones destroyed I mean it spotlight Sun destroyed by high altitude balloons well thanks for watching
Now I know the spotlight, uh, you, you think it works, but then when you really think about it, what I propose for you to do is walk, ride a bike, drive a car, and look at a street light that is a spotlight. And when you're far enough away from it, you cannot see the light source. You can see where it's shining, but you can't see the light source. And as you move closer to it, I would recommend walking because then you'll see that it's a little slit that grows to an oval, that grows to a circle as it's straight above you, but then as you walk away, it again smashes down into an oval that becomes a slit and then disappears. That is not how the sun works at sunrise or sunset. Look for yourself. For some folks, it's just something they can't fathom that they really are on a globe, but you are. Because the flat earth model does not work. So don't be fooled by their slick presentations that talk about perspective, convergence. Look at my other videos. They explain those. Uh, look at it. Uh, I dissect a high altitude balloon shot and show you this uh, fisheye GoPro. doesn't work. Please like and subscribe so you know when these come out. And then if I would love for these other filmmakers to talk to me about this. I've shown these to these. I've sent links to them. They will not comment on my videos at all. I've never had one comment. So please, it's up to you to spread the word. Keep the truth flowing. Whether you think that's your truth or not, whether you think that's mine, whether you think it's somebody else's, please like and subscribe. Spread that info. Thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please don't be fooled. Spread the word. Spread the truth. Thank you. This has been Mark with Productions. MJC.